5,000 video games. That's actually a little bit less than the actual amount of different video games that I've tried in the past two or two and a half years that I've been storing content about them on YouTube. Sometimes even making some reviews on Steam, back reports in order to help indie developers and that kind of things. So believe me, behind your gaming library there are more than 5,000 stories. Some of the most interesting stories in video games history come straight from their creators, developers sacrificing all they've got to end up succeeding, small groups of friends with an awesome spirit wanting to be the next breakthrough in the scene, and lots of other encouraging stories that are important and useful for people to still believe in developing video games, especially as a source of income, a job, or simply a passion that can be pursued in many different ways. Sometimes those stories are useful even for people outside the creation of video games, maybe as a source of inspiration or as a way to create positivity around the entire gaming community. But let's be honest, what a lot of people end up ignoring is where some of those developers start, how some of them might even risk everything to end up losing it all, or even how some of them might even quit after not finding an stable job in the industry following a more relaxed path in the hobby, possibly as a small creators that will release a few games that might not get a huge recognition from the media even if they deserve it. All of those elements end up creating a huge picture of what a developer really can be. You could have on one side of the spectrum a 10 year old child that recently has learned to use RPG Maker and starts uploading some small games to a game jam on Ichio, while on the other side you could have individuals or even teams of people creating huge works of art like The Lost Paradise, Stardew Valley or the new God of War with one important thing in common, gaming, and participating actively in the community. Quite often video games themselves can be the vehicle for the creation of stories that escape the bounds established by the developers, and this trend is increasingly common since the gaming community continues to grow in quantity of users and diversity, turning the community itself into an extension of the lore of the video games we play. Some might remember Let Me Solo Her and many other stories that were born thanks to video games and their social components, but we can even go further and look outside of the game themselves. We can think of the community getting together to praise the dedication of an old woman to the hobby. We can be happy about how many people we've got to know and met thanks to video games or how increasingly inclusive is getting the scene thanks to the appearance of accessibility options in games and controllers. Despite some recent events related to massive attempts of turning the mere act of playing into a job through some of the NFT related systems, video games have always aimed at being entertainment, sometimes through very dynamic and fun gameplay mechanics or sometimes through storytelling. An interesting thing is that even in games like Minecraft, which doesn't have a straight up story that you must follow to unravel its secrets, there are stories that are born through its systems and gameplay mechanics. The first time you kill the dragon, the first time you come out to the surface after mining for half an hour, while the soft music kicks in as you find your way out of the cave, and many more possible stories that can only be achieved through elements present in video games. Video games are by design a way to entertain ourselves, so even when we play games that apparently have no story or narrative value, we are getting into small stories and being part of them. The way we find entertainment into those games could also be considered as of of stories. And here you have my final notes about this small essay related to gaming stories. We often think of stories in video games as the plot the game intended us to get involved with, but sometimes we miss or even forget the value in what revolves around those plots, the how we came to be, who is behind them, and the stories that we can create around them when we take an active role in it, turning something that might look static into something dynamic. So please remember to value gaming for what it is, the how you your favorite stories are born. If you have reached the end of the video, I would like to thank you for watching the whole thing and for supporting me. This video was intended originally as a voice reveal 5000 subscriber special video, but I don't know. Maybe if it works great, I might even end up making a separate channel for video essays like this one or something like that. But now I would like to answer a few questions that some of the subscribers have left when I said that I would be doing a little Q&A at the end of this video.
And first we have Okunihime and the question was that what got me into gaming and and that was actually a pretty good question. If I recall correctly what got me into gaming was literally God of War and more specifically the PS2 first God of War since that was the video game that made me really love gaming and I have a lot of happy memories of playing it with my father. The next question is from Guaranteed Noob and he is asking about about how long I've been uh, playing video games and if I recall correctly I've been playing video games since I was four or five years old that's approximately when I got my first Game Boy Advance and when I started playing video games in the PS1 so basically I've been playing video games for uh, 17 years and the next question is from Anonymni and he's asking about my list favorite game and this one is really hard to answer because I've made a lot of wall flukes but usually I enjoy playing all of the games but it's true that there's a few that were quite hard to finish but if I had to pick one I'll say that that one would be Chell and if I recall correctly I didn't even finish it because as I said on my Steam review it had a lot of problems and I really think that it is an early access instead of a full release as stated on the Steam page and to close up we have a uh, Mr. Ahmed Gaming that has three questions for the first one I'll say that I have a lot of video games that I've really loved but if I had to pick one from all of the world flukes that I have uploaded I'll say that probably my favorite one was God of War on its PC version it was awesome and I had a lot of fun recording it for the second one I'll say that actually I wanted to record gameplays but with commentary but my audio setup wasn't good enough so I started recording no commentary gameplays until it got to a point where the format became the actual theme of the channel plus I started getting very comfortable making this kind of videos since it was easy to have a lot of videos scheduled while being able to experiment with different formats but always related to the no commentary concept and for the third one I'll say that I don't see myself like a really successful youtuber but if I had to give an advice to other youtubers it will be that being constant is crucial if not directly one of the most important parts of making videos and that's all I, I hope you have enjoyed uh, watching the video until the end and before anyone says anything I know that my English might be a little strange but I'll say that this is not my mother tongue actually my mother tongue is Spanish porque podría hablaros en castellano perfectamente y sé que algunos de mis suscriptores lo van a entender perfectamente but this is an English channel and I've always spoke in English in the comments and in the community post. But that's it. See you in the next one and have fun playing video games.